So now that we've got some data into our environment in Spark and we've seen how to work with it and we've done some basic aggregations, it's time to bring it home with some data visualizations. So picking up where we left off here, this is actually going to be a pretty short one because a lot of this stuff is just built in to Databricks and in Spark. It's just really awesome. So if you recall, we loaded the data from our Cogsley Services data set and then we just displayed it. So before I mess any of this up, let me just do file and clone. Copy apparently is not something they're allowed to use. So 5.3, uh, visualizing data in Spark. That's what I'll call it. Call it whatever you like. So when you do this, it hasn't ran anything. So nothing's going on here. It'll evaluate kind of the statements and see if there's any syntax errors. But if you want to do something like display data from a data frame, you have to reload that data frame as we did here. So I'm going to go to command two and I'll just go ahead and run this guy. Uh, it'll attach to the uh, cluster that we have going on. And again, if you need to recreate a cluster, go ahead and go do so. Let me jump back up. Here we go right here. Okay, so now we have our data again. We have it loaded. Everything is going good here. And I want to do a data visualization, right? I want to see uh, sales by month. Well, if I wanted to, I could write a ton of code to do that. Or I could just click this little button on the bottom here that is a bar doesn't draw anything, but then I can click plot options. And we are in a drag and drop interface here in Databricks. So drag and drop order month year, and then say sale amount to values. And look at that. Couple clicks, good to go. Go ahead and hit apply and see what we get. We get an error. And that is exactly what I wanted to talk about. So it's saying double cannot be cast in Java. I'm not going to get into why this says that or anything. But the point is, the problem we have with our data doing this type of a chart is that our data is not in good format. We just imported it flatly. And remember when we said infer schema? Well, it's uh, kind of lazy. And all it did was treat everything as text. So we can click over here on data. We can go look at our table and see where it says data type of string. That means if you want to do date operations, let's say on order date, you know, compare two dates and see the number of days between them or something, it's not going to work. You're going to have to do some operations here. So your homework is going to be how to go load that file again and change these data types. But in the meantime, what we can do is we can still fix this in our query. So I'll jump back to my workspace here, the workbook I just had open. And here where we have this error, what I want to do is I'm going to delete this select star and I'm going to pull in the exact fields I want. So I wanted the sales by month, right? And so we have a function here called cast. Then we'll do an open paren and we'll type in order month year. I believe that's what it was. I can look right here. Order month year, correct. And then say as date. So this is an old SQL function that's been around and exists pretty much in all variations of SQL out there. And what you're doing is taking a column in a table and you're changing the data type. And your fingers are crossed that the interpreter, the SQL engine that's going to execute this, understands how to do that and that your data is in a good shape. Now, I happen to know that this data is, so we'll be fine here. But don't just expect this to work, at, you know, just blindly there. It really takes um, some care and some thought. So we'll give this a column name here. We'll just call it as DT, comma, and then we want the sum of sale amount. Double check that that is the correct column name. Yes, it is, sale amount. And we'll give this one as sales. Now in SQL, if you recall, we have a group by that we need to go with an aggregation. So I'll just type it group by. And then I'm gonna copy this whole function here because I wanted to do it exactly the same way. I may not need to do that, but it's just good practice when you're running these things. Okay, so let's run this again. And we don't see any data here, but we don't have an error. Now go back to plot options and notice those fields disappeared that it was trying to use before. So it didn't error out, but it didn't you know, give us what we wanted. So I'll drag DT over to keys and I'll drag sales down to values. And look at that, we have even better data. Go ahead and hit apply. And there's nothing that needs to run. It just automatically shows. I can hover over each one of these, see the numbers. In fact, I can go back to plot options 
Typically, when you're looking at data like this, a line is a better way to do it. And here you have something that's actually much nicer to read, right? You see this nice label that pops up in the top right of the pane, the axis there. You see a good axis on the left and on the bottom you see years and a nice little label that tells us what we're looking at. So this is one of the really cool features of Databricks here and these types of notebooks that you can literally just change what you're looking at. There are all kinds of chart options. Let's just do one more because a common one is histograms. So if we wanted to see, in this case, you know, this is just showing us sort of a trend here, but let's say we wanted to see by month because we aggregated up to month, uh, what, the, uh, what, what the distribution of sales for a month is. Well, I'll click off of that, I'll click down to histogram, and then you can see essentially what it is. So this is a number of actual months that fall within these ranges, 640 to 660 to 680, et cetera. You can apply, and yeah, this isn't the, the, the prettiest format, but it was just a couple clicks. And there's so much you can do with this that I think one of the benefits of working inside of an environment like this is how easy it is to explore the data. Because... What you're really doing here is trying to find answers. If you remember with Tableau, that was one of the things is that it was really great to just click around and drag and kind of find that answer. And here, because I don't have to write 20 lines of code to generate a histogram, it also is getting me closer towards that kind of flow state. So I'm a big fan of this. Uh, I, you know, you can write your SQL or you could, you know, process the data just like we did below where, you know, you use the uh, the Python notation. Whatever you feel more comfortable with, the result is going to be the same and it's built in to make data visualization very easy, which I am a big believer in. And so lastly, all I want to show you here are the visualization wiki page from Databricks. This is the documentation. I'll put a link to this down below. But basically, you have all these kind of different visualization types and what you can do with it. And one of the neat things, again, is that it also works with all these different languages. So let me just go back up here and you can see uh, visualizations in Python. And so we've already done some of this. Um, and you can see exactly what's going on. Like here's, you can copy this code in. There's a data set here called Seaborn and you can have it run this exact code using some built-in stuff. So there's a lot you can do and you need to kind of tread lightly. In terms of what I would love for someone to demo in an interview if they were coming in and we happen to be using Spark is basically this whole process you did here. So you had a CSV, you imported that, you understand the file system, then you get the data in there and then you run some aggregations and lastly you uh, do some data processing on it. So that whole thing there is kind of the main point behind working with data. How do you get from this raw data into something that is is giving you a message that is giving you some kind of signal that then you can act on. Don't. I hope that lesson was helpful to you. If you want to learn more and continue this journey, head over to freethedataacademy.com YT to see our entire catalog and sign up for a seven-day free trial so you can start learning today to elevate your career tomorrow.